That's good to know, brother. That's real good to know. <laughs> Is what the Lord. I get 
You know, they're coming up with all these new weapons and new uh, things of today, and, and it's terrifying. Oh, people hear things like nuclear and things like that. Yeah. Oh, it's terrifying. I like to combat that, Brother Tim, by saying, God. Yes. Yes. Calm is those terrifying things. God. Amen. You see, there's nothing going to take place or happen that God will not allow. That's right. And in all that craziness that man thinks he can accomplish and do, I want to remind you of a little story in the Bible real quick before we go over to prayer. How many of y'all remember the story of Haman? Amen. Amen. He built this huge galaxy. Big scary thing. He's going to take and hang Mordecai on there because him and the king, they're like this. He goes there that morning. He's all pumped up. He's all excited, man. He's... He's a, I know he's going to give it to me. I know he's going to let me have my wish. And I'm going to kill Mordecai on his gallows. But what he didn't realize is that God had been working while he'd been sleeping. And he walked in that morning and it didn't go quite the way that he thought it was going to go. And before all was said and done, guess who hung on those gallows? Amen. Not Mordecai. Amen. You see, it may look difficult and harsh and bad and ugly and all like that. But I don't look to the things of this world. I look to God. Yep. And I know ultimately, God's got it. Yep. And God will deliver in His time. Amen. And because of that, I keep trusting, I keep following, yep. and I keep obeying the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, as we bow the priest, we come to the throne. Thank you for the opportunity. Lead God director at all this day. We praise you, we glorify you, we say thank you. Christ God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many is happy to be here this morning? Amen. 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 It's a wonderful day, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Tim, how much sleep did you get? Well, I got a full six, seven hours. <laughs> six, six or seven hours? Is that for the whole three days? <laughs> no. No, that I went to bed when I was supposed to go. Okay, <laughs> I've got to get something corrected here right real quick this morning. I'm going to take up just a little bit of your time. But I think the Lord saw all this. He knows all that was done. But I did hear that Danny caught a fish. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was a catfish, but he said it was that big. So I called it a kitty fish. <laughs> <laughs> right, Danny? <laughs> and, and then I heard that Will... Had a whale. <laughs> and was trying to hoist it in. And Tim about fell into the water trying to net it. Couldn't get it in. It broke the line, run under the dock, in between the boat. But we didn't see it. <laughs> so, Robbie, we can't count that one, right? That's all them fish tails that they were. You know how the one that's that big is this big? Yeah. Okay, we got that. And I also heard there was a guy that went with you that catches a hundred an hour. Did you catch him? <laughs> 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 Y'all going to tell the story. <laughs> I just wanted to get that clear. And then I heard. <laughs> what are you doing? Smiling, buddy. <laughs> you want to tell them what you did? Hubby. <laughs> she caught the fish. And she brought hers in, and we can eat it. Yeah. You did it. You did it. You did it. And you did it. You know the five loaves and the. <laughs> I know who I'm going fishing with. And it ain't going to be him. <laughs> and after all that, poor old Caleb. I asked Caleb, I said, Caleb, what'd you catch? He said, depression. I caught two bluegills and I helped Will catch one with a net. So, so you did, did you? Now, y'all see those reports? You know what? I missed that old thing, Tim, and I hate it that I had to miss it because I know y'all have fun. But you see what goes on, and everybody says that Christian people don't have fun. Yeah. Where do they get this idea? You see, I don't understand that. Because if you're with people with the Lord, 
Amen. So we're amongst a bunch of friends and family this morning. If y'all would stand up with me, please. Let's be happy we're at the house of the Lord. And we're going to sing this song, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? Page 22. And like I said, Brother Clint, if y'all get happy and get up and start playing out here, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs>
an offering this morning. I tell you, when a brother tells a story, he tells it second hand, he should have been there. <laughs> Amen. So you're missed. You missed that. I trust one of your people. I got you. I got you. I got you. But like Paul Harvey says, now the rest of the story. I had to kind of give you the rest of it. In all, in all fairness, Will had the he had everything stacked against him on that. He called. Hung in to two pretty good size ones out there. But it don't count unless you bring him in the boat. You gotta bring him in the boat. And we found out later his sister actually sabotaged him. <laughs> she knows how he is. And if he caught the biggest fish and everything, he'd never let her live it down. It's kind of like this one over here. He gets a hold of something and he just drives it home. Digs in the and, everything. and so what she did, she went and prayed. And she said, Lord, don't let him catch the biggest fish. <laughs> and even though he hung in the two of pretty good ones, he didn't get them in. So therefore, he didn't catch the biggest fish. So there you go, the rest of the story. But we had a long, we had a wonderful time, good fellowship, good time being out there. How many of y'all come out there? How many of y'all come out there? Next time, the rest of you come on out there. Amen. There is no age limit. There is no age limit. I told y'all ahead of time, we're, we're opening the door for everybody to come on out there and be a part of it. But those teams had a wonderful time with the team. Appreciate your dedication and, and, and really all that you do with them. It's a great blessing. But they did. They had a, had a great time. Matter of fact, uh, different ones took uh, pictures and videos. And if you got Facebook, you can go on there and see that. I tell you, uh, Miss Wanda, did you enjoy being out there and, and watching them kids get flipped? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Not saying I'm a little vindictive or anything like that, but it is. It's a it's a pleasure when you got somebody like Jacob back here going. <laughs> and said, I'm gonna teach you, boy. I'm gonna teach you. And then he tried to say, oh, I only went off once. <laughs> once at a time. <laughs> How many of y'all seen him go over more than once? <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Jacob, it's just it, it's said done. The Bible says that two or three witnesses that have reached out. <laughs> Amen. What a great, great day it was. Good opportunity. Look forward to the next time. And the next time is putting Bibles together. Tuesday, 9 o'clock, be here. And bring somebody with you. And if you think we don't have a good time then, you just got to come out and see. you got to check it out. Because we will. And uh, thank God for that. And then, of course, we've got next month camp coming out. And uh, that is the 23rd. <sighs> Danny, you're supposed to be on top of it. You're driving the van over there. The 23rd through the 28th. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, he's yeah, right. over the road sign. How are you supposed to know where to go? There's no road sign. It's simple, Danny. Dog walk. The dog walk turns right after the post office. Post office, dog walk, turn up that lane. Mm -hmm. We know that. Uh, yeah, you're right, John. I forgot about that. He didn't even know how to get there. I know that don't build a lot of confidence in the parents. <laughs> But we got him there safe, thank God. And uh, we, we got everybody there. But you know what? Here's, here's what I, I just want to throw out here this morning as we get ready to go to Lord in prayer. There's so much that we plot, we plan, we try to organize, uh, organize we do this, we do that. Contrary to what you might believe, we, we do have a we have a plan that we're trying to go by and this, that, and the other. But every so often, God shows up in a way that changes all that and throws a little curveballs into it. And before all said and done, you're like, that's why you did it. And I don't know who you are out there this morning, but I'm here to tell you, think of it this way. God has a sense of humor. Yes. He has a way of throwing them curveballs in there. And I got news for you. He's in control. That's right. That's what it is. We did ask God to take and stop that rain Thursday. Y'all might remember there's a good storm come through. All like that, and uh, we were wanting a good time being able to be out there on the boat and all like that. And so we asked God to stop the rain. <coughs> we left the cabins up above, went down to where the dock is, and we got down there, and we got to see not one, but two rainbows. Amen. Now they can try all they want to steal, and it is what they're trying to do: steal. Yeah. The rainbows change it. Yeah. They've added a few stripes to their rainbow. I think it's like eight or nine now that they've got. But I got news for you now. That's God's. Mm -hmm. And it means what it means. Yes. And you're not going to change it no matter what you want to do. 
in your thoughts and your ideas. Amen. The rainbow belongs to God. Amen. And I looked up into that sky and didn't see one. I seen two side by side. I got the picture of it. You want to see it? Two side by side. And you know, Brother Tim, we had a wonderful time. We did. We had a safe time. And you know what? It was glorious. Just watching how God worked through all these things. What a great God we serve. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Davis, ask the blessing on the offer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for the safe weekend for the camping. We're grateful for your grace and your forgiveness, Lord, and your comfort. Only you can give, Lord. We, we've suffered some losses at the church, and we can fellowship together and go through it together under your grace, in your grace, Lord. That's the only place to find peace, Lord. Yes. We give you all praise and glory, Lord. I pray that Give the words to Brother Shane this morning, Lord, and open up our hearts so that we can hear the word that you have for all of us, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good to be with God's people. 
Yes. And that's what this uh, last week was all about. Us as a family spending time together. Amen. And uh, we're, we're not punching clocks. We're not, you know, sometimes you do things and people are like, you know, you got to be on an agenda. You got to be a schedule. No, that's, that was not the reason. The reason was to be together with some joy. And we were. We had a good, good opportunity, good spirit, good temperament. Yes, we're poking at each other about fishing and things like that. But you know what? It's good just to be out there. And then to see the hand of the Lord. Mm. See the beauty that God's given to us. How much is going on in our lives for so much chatter and racket and we really miss, as the old saying goes, the force for the trees. <laughs> what God's given to us. I tell you, you do yourself some good in the morning. Before daybreak, Get up, go out there, and just look out at God's creation. Amen. I do this sometimes. I watch those birds as they begin to sing. Yep. I watch those squirrels as they chase each other around that big old tree I got in my front yard. I watch all of God's creation out here, and I'm telling you, it is a great sight to see. And it brings a great peace, and it really does. Like the deal of us praying and asking God to stop the rain so we could get out on the water and lo and behold not only did he send one rainbow he sent two amen and uh, i tell you it's almost like we got a double blessing on that amen, amen. and uh, it's, it's just it's just beautiful and i thank god for the opportunity and it is good to see these kids experience things that they hadn't experienced before and do things like they've never done before and it, just watching them grow and and then grow together in the process it just was beautiful God, it really was. And so that's why we go out and we do what we do. Because ultimately, we're here for His honor and His glory. Amen. We're here to do what He's put us here to do, and that is be a brother and a sister one to another. Amen. Love one another, care one for another. And I thank God for that. And so if you go with me this morning, <clears throat> there's times that we think we're failures. Matthew chapter 13. Discouragement, depression. These things begin to take hold and consume us. But I want you to understand something. I find great strength in this passage of Scripture. Not a cop out. It's not letting me off the hook per se, but it's putting things into perspective. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 53. Go with me this morning. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 53, And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Now they're astonished. They're amazed. Where did he get it? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this his mother called Mary? His brother and James and Hosea's and Simon and Judas and his sisters are they not all with us whence then hath this man all these things you know it always never ceases to amaze me no matter what God does with a person no matter how God has changed a person people always want to hold over their head what they were that's what they're doing here. And he the carpenter's son. His brothers, his sisters. How in the world did he get all this wisdom? Where did it all come from? They were offered, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. And in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their 
unbelief. Yes. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here today. Be in the message today as only you can. Thy will be done in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. When we get to glory, we're probably going to be revealed or show some things that what could have been and should have been, but never will be because of us. Let me explain it to you. We can be our own worst enemy. Right. Yep. We can hamper and hinder just simply because we don't take God at his word. Yes. Understand that. Fear sets in, uh, circumstance arises, hey, chatter starts happening around us, and before you know it, we lose sight of why we're really here. Amen. You see, here it is that Jesus, verse number 53, he says in verse number 53, and it came to pass that he, when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was coming to his own country, he began to talk, he began to teach them. The Bible reveals to me, Brother John, that Jesus says in Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I've got all power in heaven and in earth. Now, because you have that, he gives us something here, Ken, that we're going to do. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, <laughs> baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I command you, and along with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we know that, Ted. We know that. We understand that. He's got all power. There's all capability. All that is with Jesus. Amen. John 1 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, not only is he got all power, but he created all things, and it's all by his power that all things were created. Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. It's all in his hands. It's all his creation. He's created all of this. Every bit of it. You understand that? You really need to understand that. God has created all things. Now let's remember who he is. Matthew 123. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall cause the name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus is God in the flesh. He has all capability. He has all power. There's nothing that is limited to him. He can do all things. Amen. Amen. We even like to quote the verse. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hey, it's God and his ability in the form of Jesus Christ. He's got all power. Okay? Would you all agree with me that like that this morning? Amen. It is true that Jesus has all power. Now, go into Philippians chapter 2. Philippians in chapter number 2. Verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife and vain, or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind let ye each esteem other better than themselves. Do it as Jesus did it. Do it as the Lord did it. Why? Well, first place, he's got all power. He is God in the flesh. We've done establish that through the scriptures here. And in the process there, he tells you, Brother Tom, do it the way Jesus does it. Amen? Amen. Through being a consolation in Christ and the covenant of, of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, have the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Amen. As we start to learn how to exalt one another and help each other in the process. You know, 
I had a situation here a few weeks back where somebody was sitting there trying to overshadow and, and, and really trying to make a presence of their own and all like that. And when all that arise, arisen, Miss Linda, I just let it fall right to the wayside. I didn't worry about that because you know what? I'm not here to glorify me. I'm here to glorify the Lord. Yep. Now, sometimes people, they want to glorify themselves. Amen. They want to be seen. They want others to see them and acknowledge what they've done and how they've done it and all like that. You know what? I'm just here to glorify the Lord. So sometimes, Brother Jack, you've got to take it in the teeth. Yep. Amen. Yep. I know we don't like that. That's not our human nature. Our human nature is that if they come at me, I'm going to come back at them. Amen. Right? We're going to go tip for tap. We're going to, you know, hey, hey, you did this to me. I'm going to do that to you. Amen. And I for an eye. We all like that passage of scripture because it allows us, we think, to go tip for tap. Yeah. Like I did for you. That's not good. When they reviled him, he reviled not back. That's right. He took it. Now I'm going to tell you, that really takes somebody to take it when they're coming pretty hard at you. Yes. You say he took it. Yes. He took it. <clears throat> Let me put it to you this way. He didn't hang on that cross for him. No. He ain't going to hang on that cross for me. So now here he's enduring some things. He's he, he, he's, he says, go through things. And verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. He's God in the flesh. But yet, Danny, he took on the form of a servant and became like you and me. That's something important to really realize. Read on. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. You remember when Pilate was saying, hey, I can release you. I got this power. Jesus reminded him that he wouldn't have any power except it were given to him from above. Mm -hmm. You remember when John was there at the Jordan River baptizing and Jesus come on the scenes right there and John tells Jesus, hey, I have need to be baptized of you. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Suffer it to be so now. So fulfills the scriptures. What Jesus is telling John, no, 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 no. This is what my father wants and I'm going to obey his word. Right. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Yes. And he did. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, the Bible says. And he's willing to do what God wants him to do. Now, let's be honest about this thing. How many times have we thought within ourselves, boy, if I had the power, I'd do this and I'd do that. <clears throat> boy, if I had the power, this is what I'd do and that's what I would do. You know the problem with that kind of thinking? It's stinking. The problem with that kind of thinking, it's centered around you. Yep. Yep. It's about what you want and what you will do. That's why we don't have that kind of power. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, I have power today, but my, my power is not to glorify Shane Scott. My power that is within me is to reach out and to bless others. It's so important to understand this. And remember, I started off by saying we get discouraged and depression. We're getting there. We're getting there. Read on. But was made of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that is in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You know why? Because he humbled himself under, under God. Yes. yes. Now go back with me to verse number 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them, in their synagogue, and so much that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom in these mighty works? 
Where did he get it? He's in his own country. He, he went back home, if you will, and they're not giving him the time of day. They're not paying attention to what God's done with him. No, I'm not thinking about that. Matthew 2, 21, and he arose and took the young child with his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard of Archelaus did, the, did reign in, in Judah in the room of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So he went back to Nazareth, Brother John. That's, that's where he's at. That's his country, if you will. Luke chapter 4, verse number four, verse number 16. Then he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And, and, as a, and, and his custom was he went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And so here he is. He's in Nazareth and he's carrying out God's word and he's doing all these things. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened, he, he, when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel of the, of, of, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance of the captives, to, reco to recovering of the, of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are, that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. If you want to ponder for a second, I want you to think about that. Jesus is saying, that's why I'm sent. That's why I'm here. This is what I'm here to do. I remind myself over and over and over why I'm here. I'm not here to glorify me. I'm here to glorify him. Yes. 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 I'm not here to make a name for me. I'm here to glorify the name that is above all names. Yes. That's why we're here. I get the fact that the guy likes it when he goes across the goal line and he gets to spike the football and everybody's cheering and touting his accomplishment. I got news for you. If that's what you think accomplishment is, you're really shallow in your thoughts. I've scored a few touchdowns myself. But I got news for you. That touchdown did not define who and what I am. That's right. You know what I give you much more credence to? That one that reached out and helped somebody that was weaker than they were. Mm -hmm. To bring them to understanding, to enlighten them, to change their life. A life that now forevermore will never be the same. I give you a lot more credence on a deal like that. You want to know real heroes? That's a real hero. Somebody that does not just affect your life here, but your eternity hereafter. Yep. Yep. Amen. That right there means a lot more. Spike your footballs all you want to, but I got news for you. Those are temporal things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Those are temporal things. Those things don't last. How many of y'all have ever won a trophy? Come on now. I got the MVP. Baseball, MVP. Don't know where that trophy is today. I think it's in storage somewhere. Now. <laughs> I think it's got a lot of dust on it. I hadn't seen it for some time. But yay ha, hadn't seen it for some time. I guarantee you it's not really worth that much. Amen. You know what I like to think more on? I like to think more on like Mason. Somebody that was a little terrified, somebody that was a little, little scared, and he overcome that and got on out there and rolled that inner tune and had a wonderful time. I like to think more about that Jacob. Yep. God knows Jacob. God bless him. God bless him. He's rambunctious and all like that. But Brother Tim, didn't he say he was there to help and to do and to be a light and encouragement? Amen. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad? I'd much more like to think about Leah. I'd like to more think about Sis. I'd like to think more about those people that God's using and utilizing for our tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see that right there? You want to talk about the accomplishments and things that we can tout and we can glorify God in. Those are the things. Yeah. I remember back years ago, they used to talk about those bus kids. Anybody in here that's a bus kid? Let me explain it to you. My preacher, one of my mentors, one of the greatest men in my life, Brother Redman. 
was a bus kid. And because God used him and utilized him, he's touched a lot of lives down through his life. One of the saddest days of my life was the day that I had to say goodbye. I miss him. Oh, I miss him. But for nearly 30 years, I walked with him. And I thank God for the years that I had with him. The things that he instilled and the things that he left behind, those are the things that I like to treasure. Yep. Now, why is it important? Here he goes to his own, and John 1, 11 says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He had no part to do with him. They didn't, uh, no, no, no. Any of the carpenter's son? John 7, verse 14, go there with me. Verse 14 says, Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. The Jews marveled, saying, uh, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Isn't it amazing how people can never give you the credit that you can learn things? Hmm? How many people look at you and they like to judge you based upon where you came from? <laughs> yeah. Anybody in here that grew up on a farm? Yeah. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Don't underestimate a farmer. Right. Yes. Farmers right there are about as close to life as anybody out there. That's right. You see, one thing a farmer has to learn early on Life and death. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I never did like it. You know, those those animals that have been taken care of and everything, that one day I walked out there and all of a sudden uh, uh, they're, they're dead. And you have to contend with that. You have to deal with that. You can't turn the blind eye and never hear. You can't walk away from that. No, hey, you have to pay attention to what's going on right there. What you have to do. Then you have to press forward and move on. Day in and day out, early morning, late nights. Many, many times throughout my upbringing and everything, there's no such thing as regular, normal hours. Yes, that's right. Matter of fact, can anybody in here today describe to me what normal is? <laughs> Y'all help me out with that one. I'd like to kind of nail that down. When they sit here and say this one's normal, that's not normal. Well, what is normal? Yep. Normal for your eyes? I got news for you. If you begin to do a little test today and ask all around this room, you'll find out that everybody in this room is different. I'm going to let you in a little secret. I'm glad it's that way. Yes. Thank you, Lord. How boring it would be if you were all me. <laughs> he said, well, Rich, we like you. Good. I'm glad you do. Thank you, Lord. But if I got me 24-7 all the time, no more variety, no more other than, I know what I'm going to do next. You don't know. I know. I don't know what you're going to do next. But isn't it wonderful to see the change, the difference? Yes, yes, yes. We start to ponder and think about here. He is, oh, how, how did he learn all these things? How did he know all these things? Is he not the carpenter's son? Don't we see his brother in here? Don't we see his sisters here? Hey, he's just a poor boy. How do we know these things? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he should know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether it be, or rather he speak of myself and, 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 and he that spake of himself, seeking his own glory. He said, Look, I'm not here to glorify me. I'm here to glorify the one that sent me. Yes. But he that seeketh his, uh, his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keep the law, keep it the law. Why go ye about to kill me? He said, look, I just did what God sent me here to do, and you don't like it. You're upset about it. Look what Moses did, and, and, and now that you want to glorify Moses. But you didn't listen to Moses when he was here. 
Jesus answered and said to them, I have done one work, and you shall, and you all are. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me? Because I have made a man ever with whole on the Sabbath day. He says, you know, it's all right for y'all to do what y'all do, but it's not all right for me to do what I do. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How many of us in here live by double standards? Yes. Oh, be careful. How many of y'all remember that old saying when you point that finger? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's three coming back at me. Oh, how we take and isolate one against the other. Oh, how we like to do these things. Acts 4.10 says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. He says, look, the very one that you didn't want is the very one that you need. Yep. The very one that you denied is the very one that you need. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which became the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby you must be saved. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. He's the only one. Amen. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marked. You know what we like to do? We like to exalt and glorify one another. I've had it asked to me many times. Over the years, I've had my opportunity to go for my doctorate, and I don't want it. So don't ever expect me to be Dr. Shane Scott. You know who would have to give me a doctorate? Man. I'm not opposed to education. Don't misunderstand me. I study all the time. But why do we need to glorify oneself over another's? Why do we need to glorify one above the other? Why don't we understand that God put us here to be a servant, to be a light, to be encouraging one, one to another? Oh, that just shows how much education you've got. Education with who? Through whose eyes? You see, here it is, Paul. Here it is, Peter. Here it is, all these people that we're talking about and everything. Peter's sitting here preaching and teaching, and they're saying, Hey! How do they know these things when they're so unlearned? Apparently, they're pretty learned. Y'all yeah. with me this morning? Yes. You see, that's the way that we enslave each other. That's the way we hold each other back. That's the way that we manipulate. It's like looking into Cosmopolitan <laughs> and seeing her on the front going, and you're saying, oh, mercy, preacher, i got to get down to that size. <laughs> Why? Because she's on the cover of a magazine. Do you not understand? There's a, a woman who was a reporter back through the 70s. That deal in Cosmopolitan, she said, we made those stories up. Because we knew. Go back and read it. A few years back, she came out and she acknowledged we made those stories up. There's no truth to that. Because we knew that if we would put together a story, it would, mean, it would move the populace to do what we wanted them to do, to buy what we wanted them to buy, to lead them the direction we wanted to lead them. So they manufactured and moved the stories so that you would go and buy. How do y'all remember the days and the times when they said, stay away from eggs? We've been in eggs for hundreds of years, but stay with the eggs. Cholesterol. Good <laughs> cholesterol under control. How many of y'all realize they moved the need to want blood pressure? Yeah. Do you realize blood pressure, higher blood pressure used to be acceptable. Now it's gotten slower. That, that's because medication's got to be Y'all yeah. yeah. with me this morning? Y'all listening? Amen. You see, it's the way that we enslave. It's the way that we, uh, we, we hold people back. It's the way we manipulate. It's the way we lord over. 
begin to ponder, begin to think about how these things, Brother Carl, lay on our minds. I begin to think about this. I begin to really ponder this. And I want to go right to the heart of it this morning. I want to get right to the heart of it. Look with me. Verse number 57. They were offended at him. They didn't like what he was saying. Although he was saying the truth. Bible says they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor in his own country and in his own house. Verse 58. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Now, I started off this message today to remind you that God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, has all power. Yes, he does. He's created all things, and he's worthy to receive honor and glory because he's created all things. Yes. He's more than capable. Amen? Yes. But yet, in his own country, in his own country, he didn't do many mighty works there. No, it's not because he can't. It's not that he's not able to. It's because they don't want it. Now I want you to understand something here. This is really the heart of the message today. It's entitled, Not Many Mighty Works. It's real easy to look out there I'll give you a little story. How many of y'all know in Hammond, Indiana? Jack Isles. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. You remember Jack Isles was the premier bus ministry in the country. Yeah. Hundreds yeah. they were bringing in. Now, let me explain something to you. Jack Isles had a college. Yeah. Means that a lot of young people. And those young people would go out and work and do and so on and so forth. And they would host conferences. And those people from all over the country would come in and see how Jack Isles did it in Hammond, Indiana. Now let me tell you, Hammond, Indiana, there's a lot of people there. Okay? Hammond, Indiana, a lot of people. And they would go in and they'd do it this way. Boy, and the people would get out their little ink pens and everything, the little paper, and, and they're writing down and making notes and they do this. Okay, they do that. And they do this and they do that. And then they go back home to pull up. Violent Tennessee. Hammond, Indiana. Violent Tennessee. Dr. Cherkov says we got to do it this way, we got to do that, and everything. All right, here's our new system, brothers and sisters at the church. We're going to follow this to the letter of the law. We're going to do everything they do in Hammond, Indiana. And we go out through there at Hope's Cove, and we begin to knock on these doors, begin to do this, begin to do that, and we're implementing everything that they're doing in Hammond, Indiana. It's volatile. Sir. <laughs> and after a few weeks into a month, month and a half, we've only got just a handful of people coming. And what follows that is discouragement and depression. Yeah. Yeah. I followed it to the letter of the law. I did everything they did in heaven, Indiana. Why can't I get more than just a handful? And he did. Not many mighty works there. Not that he didn't do mighty works. Many mighty works there. Because of their own. We as God's people need to understand where we can and where we cannot. Amen. Ecclesiastes says there's a time, there's a time. Mm -hmm. right. now, I'm not letting you off the hook. If you go and do your best, if you apply and put yourself out there and you do your best, all God wanted you to do is go and serve him. Yep. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> He's got him in Indiana. You need to be followed. Yeah. 
been to those pastors training schools and and over and over and over they got all this different formula brother tom that they want us to implement back at our churches i told them one time i said let me enlighten you on something brothers what works in hammond indiana it's not going to work in Powell, Tennessee. Yeah. Amen. It's a different group of people. What I've come to understand, Brother Tim, you've got to pastor where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. It's really easy to get discouraged. It's really easy to feel like a failure. But I'm reminded of the Lord Jesus Christ who has all power, who can move mountains, who created the world, spoke it into existence, and still yet, in his own little country right there, he couldn't do many mighty works yeah. because of their own belief. Yeah. And I get it. And it rocks our worlds. And I see a lot of people, Brother Glenn, get discouraged and quit on God. Yeah. Let me simplify it for you this morning. Pay close attention. Listen to me. God's not asking you to be him in Indiana. All he's asking you to be is Estel Springs. Yep. Be Faith Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Let me explain it to you. We had a big week this week. Mm -hmm. We had a big week this week. We've invited any and everybody that we wanted to come out that could come out and be a part of that. And everybody that did was. Amen. What I can't do is I can't help who will and who won't. You can't help who will and who won't. And when people don't show up after you've invited them, don't get discouraged. Remember, the Lord himself couldn't help certain people. He wanted to. Brother Bird, he wanted to. Oh, how he wanted to. But they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't have it. And I see this happening today because we start to feel like we're failures, but we're not. Right. All God asks you to do is serve him. Yep. Yep. Live according to his word. And if that's what we do, then Brianna, we're doing exactly what God's put us here to do. Is everybody going to accept it? Is everybody going to receive it? No. You know, Danny, outside these walls, they're going to talk, they're, they're, they're going to make fun of it, they're going to, they're going to hope by it up and all. We're not doing it for them, we're doing it for him. Yep. And when the process, you know. That takes a lot of the heavy lifting off, Brother Alex. Because it's not on me, it's on him. Yes, man. Remember what Psalm says, Brother Robbie, if, except the Lord build a house, they that labor, labor in vain that build it. We need God to do what God does. Yep. See, the best way for us to do that, Miss Wanda, is to get out of his way. Yes. Yeah. Let God have his place. Amen. I'm not trying to turn us into Hammond, Indiana, or any other place. I'm just trying to live out and be Estel Springs, Faith Baptist Church, where God's put us. Amen. And even Jesus himself didn't do many mighty works. Why? Because of their unbelief. Yeah. You know, see, he didn't say his unbelief. Their unbelief. Very important for us to exercise what God's put before us. Yeah. Look around this morning. What do you say, Miss Carol? We're family. You might write with family. To me, that matters the most. Amen. Being the body of believers that God's brought together. Yeah. See, here's the deal. I'm not trying, Brother David, to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to build a mega church. I'm just trying to build a body of believers that God will be pleased with. That's right. That's Bring right. glory and honor to the Lord. That's right. You see, it takes all the heavy lifting off of it, James. That depression removes all that. Now listen to me very carefully. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what your mind's been thinking on this week. But sometimes it's easy to get down. Discouraged. Yeah. Nah. Like he says in Romans 8. We are more than conquerors. Yes. We are more than conquerors. Look. Like what Lester Roloff said to Dr. David Gibbs. Lester Roloff was in prison. They lost their court case. Dr. David Gibbs, the lawyer, come in here and said, Lester, I'm sorry, man, we've lost. We can appeal, but we've lost. This round, I, I, I'm, I'm going to file the papers in the morning. Lester Roloff looked at him and he said, David! David! 
We don't fight for the victory. We stand in victory. Amen. I'm not trying to achieve and accomplish. I'm just here to carry out what my master, what my Lord, what my God has said. And that is to be a lie to a lost and dying world. The fact of the matter is, it takes all the heavy lifting off. Yeah. It makes life a whole lot simpler. The confusion, that aggravation, that discouragement, not looking to me. I'm looking to him. That's right. And I reminded about 2,000 years ago that he conquered death and hell. So Brother Lester Roloff is exactly right. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm not trying to achieve or obtain anything. I've already got it. Yep. Amen. Yep. All I'm trying to do is live to honor and please him. Amen. So if my Lord and Savior, who's God in the flesh, couldn't do many my works there because of their unbelief, what do you think I can do? Don't be discouraged. Just understand that. Just understand. Some people just ain't going to believe. The Bible says he went unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Some people, you're not going to win. But don't stop. Amen. Because some will. Yeah, that's right. And it's those some that will is what keeps us driving. And going forward to the next one. Amen. You see if you read. Later on in the scriptures. He left there. Went on down into Capernaum. You know what happened? They received him. They began to believe. They followed. Wow. What if he'd stayed back to Perth Nazareth? Huh? It's time for us to press forward. Say amen right there. Amen. I promise you. Keep going on to the next. You'll win them. The ones that God wants you to have. I was talking to a person this last week, and I was telling them, I said, you know, even those close to me, even some family members and everything, they were kind of shocked because they're like, you know, we're not coming to the church. They said, fine, don't bother me none. What? I said, look, I only what I only want what God wants me to have. Amen. I only want what God wants me to have. <laughs> See, it's not on me. It's on him. Mm -hmm. It takes all the heavy lifting off of it and brings Amen. peace to the situation. That's right. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here today. Help us, remind us, encourage us. There's so many that we've reached out to, so many we've invited, and time and time again, we said, no. Don't let that hinder us or hold us back. Remind us, dear Lord, that they did that to you too. Mm -hmm. But let us go forward. Go on to Capernaum. Let's go forward and win those that we can. Amen. Be a testimony to those that will listen and receive. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace in Christ's name. Amen. All stand with faith of John. Page 278. 278. Because when your heart you come. Some are moving, others need to. Come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Alabama and Indiana. How many of y'all in here know where Bible is at? Makes my point. Some of you do, some of you don't. That's all right. Don't hurt my feelings none whatsoever. It's my little spot of heaven. Growing up is where God put me. But I think about those spots. I think about those places that a lot of people overlook. Things like that. Reminded what my brother Tony Ayers said one time. Brother Raymond went through a real battle down there in Texas. And after Brother Tony and I witnessed what Brother Redman went through and all like that in the big place of Arlington, Texas, man. Big old place, big conglomerate down there. You got Dallas, Fort Worth. You got uh, Dallas and, and all like that. You know, and you got Arlington and all like that, all down together. <laughs> Anyways, we begin to talk between ourselves. And he said, you know, Brother Shane, he's pondering about leaving Lawrenceburg. And he said, you know, Brother Shane, somebody's got to pastor these people. Somebody's got to pastor these people. Brother Tony's still there. Been there 20-something years now. I said, you know, Brother Tony, you're right. Somebody's got to pastor this people. A lot of times we get the wrong things in our minds. You know, preachers come up, they think about churches, well, I'm going to get this church, and then we'll go on and get the bigger one. Somebody's got to pastor those people. All we got to be is the light where God's put us. Amen. Be the encouragement where God is using us and utilizing us. We need to lose all those other thoughts. You see, what Jesus did, wherever he went, he was used and utilized by God. Yes. He wanted to reach his people. That's why he went there. But he couldn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Don't be discouraged. And remember why you're doing what you're doing. It's not for them anyhow. It's for the Lord. It's why we do what we do. For his honor and his glory. And in the process, he'll put you where he wants you. Amen. Amen. Where you can do as he wants you to do. That's right. Doesn't matter if everybody knows about it. Like I said, not everybody in here knows about Bible. If you'd like to go, I'll load you up in the truck. We'll take you a visit over there. <laughs> But you know, that's not the place I'm looking forward to. The place I'm looking forward to is where my Lord is. Amen. But until then, until then, I'm going to keep serving Him, yep. honoring Him, pleasing Him, Amen. living for Him. Thank God for the opportunity. Yes. Appreciate you being here today. Ain't God good? Amen. Amen. Blessed us with a lot. <coughs> Brother Carl, it's good to see you, brother. I'll keep Brother Carl in your prayers. There's a procedure we're praying about. We're willing to be able to do that, Brother Carl. We're willing they will. Dismiss us in prayer, Brother. Amen. Yeah.